leverage dopamine in a way that really will bring you to the holy grail of motivation and drive. So how do we make effort the reward? Is to adopt the mindset that if you can't do something or if you can't do it well, that you can't do it or can't do it well yet. It's that word yet that's really key. That all sounds pretty straightforward, but there's also circumstances where people, myself included, of course, procrastinate. So how can we overcome procrastination? Well, it turns out that there are findings from within the addiction literature that turn out to be very powerful towards leveraging our way out of procrastination. A very potent set of tools that you can leverage to overcome states of lack of motivation, overcome procrastination. Now, how do I know the contour of this so well? How do I understand the inner dynamics of it? Well, part of that relates to my work as a neurobiologist, but it also relates to the fact that I am somebody who waits quite a while <laughs> right up until the sort of last minute possible to complete something for activities that I don't want to do. I'm very familiar with the procrastination process. Imagine you're in an amotivated state. You're just not feeling motivated. You're procrastinating. You may think, okay, the thing to do here is something. I'll clean the house. I'll take care of some bills. I'll do something. Or I'll just wait. Those approaches, as we talked about before, generally don't work or at least don't work quickly. Or they lead you right up to the deadline and that's the deadline that forces you to get something done. Or you just don't get it done and you don't succeed in your goal. That happens a lot as well. The typical advice would be just exercise for one minute. Okay, just get one minute of exercise or five minutes and then use the successful completion of that one or five minutes as a milestone that allows you to then move to the next milestone. And indeed, that approach can work. But for a lot of people, even that won't be possible because they just can't get motivated or they do that one minute or five minutes and they're just like, okay, I'm still in the trough. I'm not actually feeling that great. In those circumstances, it makes sense to do something that's tangential to the whole path that you're trying to pursue, this goal that you're trying to pursue that really will bring you to the holy grail of motivation and drive. So the way this works is the following. If you recall, a peak in dopamine is followed by a trough in dopamine. That trough in dopamine is experienced as pain. That pain that I'm referring to is actually a craving or a wanting, and it's a craving or wanting for a specific state that you would like to achieve that is different than the one that you're in. You wanna get out of that trough. And as you recall from earlier in the episode, that trough is the stimulus for the ongoing release of dopamine that provides the propeller, the motivation to go forward and seek some goal. But the rate at which you get out of that trough is proportional to how steep that trough is. If you were to take that state of being unmotivated, of procrastinating, and actually do something that's harder than being in that amotivated state. In other words, doing something that's more effortful, even painful, you can rebound yourself out of that dopamine trough much more quickly. And the way to do that is to either engage in some tangential activity, meaning an activity not related to your goal that puts your body into a very different state that is believe it or not, much worse than just being a motivated. And when I say worse, I don't mean picking some task that normally you don't like to do, but now you're willing to do. I mean, literally thinking about what would be worse than being in this state. So the key is to figure out something that for lack of a better way to put it, really sucks, really sucks, and yet is safe. And by doing that, you steepen the trough, you steepen the slope of the trough which we know brings you back to your baseline level of dopamine more quickly. So if I'm procrastinating to do something I really need to do, should I just simply wait for that procrastination to evaporate? No. Will it eventually evaporate? Maybe. Will a deadline eventually surface that will trigger me into an anxious or activated state that will allow me to complete what needs to be done? Maybe. Hopefully. But better would be to get out of that amotivated state, that state of procrastination, quickly. And to do so, you need to leverage something that's painful. 